Hello, and welcome to another Linux tutorial. Um, today's video, we're going to be setting up a web server um, on our existing Ubuntu install. So if you've been following along with the last video, you should have an Ubuntu server 18.04 um, set up installed on either a virtual machine or physical hardware. Um, we're going to be setting up a web server, um, aka LAMP server. Uh, LAMP stands for Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. So we've already got the uh, Linux uh, part of that set up. So we're going to go ahead and move on to installing the rest of the software needed to uh, serve up web pages. So um, let's see, the first thing to note would be that right now, if you were to navigate to your server uh, in a web browser, uh, you'll get a, a site can't be reached because um, right now basically that's a bare bones um, install of Ubuntu and it does not serve up web pages at this point. So I just wanted to show you that what it'll do right now and then we'll uh, check it out and see what it does uh, towards the end. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is uh, download and install PuTTY because we're going to be connecting to this server using SSH. Uh, PuTTY is a pretty cool program for doing that. Um, what you'll need to do is make sure that it's set to SSH and uh, port 22 because that's what um, SSH uses. Um, and the next thing that you're going to need to do is find your IP address for that server. So um, you can do that one of two ways. Uh, you can either log into that local machine and type in the I or type in the command ifconfig i f c o n f i g. Uh, that will give you um, a readout similar to, let me show you, similar to this. And what you'll be wanting to look for is this INET um, address right here. So that's the address that you're going to want to type into PuTTY. Um, if you have a router hooked up, you can also uh, log into your router and check your DHCP list and uh, look for the name that you named your server. I think I named mine Ubuntu server. So it'll show up in my list uh, with that name. So once you have the IP address, uh, you're gonna wanna log into PuTTY. Uh, enter your IP address here. And hit open. Uh, you may get a warning about uh, fingerprint keys for SSH um, to basically prove the identity of the server you're trying to connect to and asks if you trust it. Uh, you can go ahead and just click yes on that if you get that uh, pop-up war warning. So uh, once you get this screen, you can go ahead and log in just like you would if you were locally at the machine. And you should be presented with the login screen. So let's go ahead and get started uh, installing Apache. Apache is the web server um, software for this. So it's the actual um, web server program. Um, actually, what we're gonna do first first is update our machine. So we're gonna uh, make sure that we have the latest software. So the first um, command you're gonna wanna type in is sudo apt-get update. And hit enter and this will update your uh, package lists. Um, make sure that you have um, the latest list of available software. And then we're going to uh, do a sudo apt-get upgrade, and that will actually update your software. And so there's quite a few here because this is just a base install and we haven't updated yet, so this may take a minute. I'll go ahead and speed up the footage here uh, if it starts taking too long. Okay, so the update is complete. So uh, before we move on, I just want to show you again that uh, if you were to try to browse to your server in a web browser, currently you get this site can't be reached because we don't have anything uh, serving up web pages. So now we're going to go ahead and install Apache 2. And that should allow us to serve up basic web pages. 
So we're just going to type in the command sudo apt install apache2 and it's going to ask you are you sure you want to install all these packages we're going to hit yes and this should only take a few minutes not even minutes a few seconds it's a pretty quick uh, install there all right so now if we were to go back to our browser and try to browse to that web page, if everything worked correctly, you should get this screen that says it works. And uh, this is the first web page that's uh, going to show through your web server. So this is kind of the standard page, kind of just to check to make sure everything's working. So um, if you do not see this page after you install, you may need to check your firewall um, the way that you would do that is with sudo ufw app list, and that will show you um, what applications are available through your firewall. Um, the main one that you're looking for is Apache Full. Uh, that should encompass the Apache Secure and the regular Apache. Um, this is for your standard HTTP sites, uh, which uses port 80. And this is for your Apache, uh, for your HTTPS websites. Uh, so your uh, port 443, um, I believe. And um, so Apache full should encompass both of those. If you're not seeing Apache full, um, what you'll wanna do is, let's actually just check the info of Apache full so you can see which um, ports it's gonna use. So you would type in the sudo ufw app info and then in quotes apache full and it'll show you um, what it uh, what protocols it's going to allow through and then right down here it'll show you which ports so we want to allow that and if you don't have it on your list and you want to allow uh, you would type in this command sudo ufw allow in uh, in quotes uh, apache full and that will um, uh, that'll um, add it to your list of uh, applications that are allowed through. So that is basically all that you need to do for um, installing Apache. Um, the next thing that we're going to move on to is MySQL. Um, this is going to be your database uh, so that you can uh, run and load and store database information. Um, it's also a fairly straightforward install. Uh, all you'll need to do is a sudo apt install mysql-server. And it's again going to ask, are you sure you want to install all these packages? And you're going to hit Y for yes and press enter. And again, this uh, should only take a few seconds. Um, there's a little bit more configuration that we have to do for um, MySQL to secure it um, because it is a database and requires its own set of passwords. So uh, we'll uh, secure it after we get it installed. Well, don't stop on me now. Uh, there we go. Okay, so that is mysql so it's installed um, but we're going to go ahead and secure the installation with a second command uh, sudo mysql underscore secure underscore installation and so this first question it's asking is basically if you want to um, enable the validate password plugin i personally don't like the validate password program um, because I hate it when it, any application forces me to use a certain set of um, parameters for my passwords. So this will allow you to set like how long your passwords are. Does it need a special character? Does it need this or that? So uh, I'm just gonna hit N for no, because I do not want that. Um, it's gonna ask for uh, the password that you wanna use for your root password for your database. I am just gonna do a basic password, it's gonna ask you to retype it. And this is the second part of securing it. It's just gonna ask, do you wanna remove the anonymous users? I select yes for this. 
It's going to ask if you want to disallow root logins remotely. Um, since we're going to only be using our database locally on this machine, we don't need remote logins. So it's a good idea to secure that. Push Y for yes. Um, do we want to remove the test database? Uh, yes, because we don't need it. And we want to reload the privileges tables now. Yes. Okay. So that is a secure MySQL um, install. We're going to go ahead and log into MySQL and change a few other settings. So for that, we're going to write uh, sudo MySQL. That will bring you to a new prompt that uh, you're logged into MySQL now. Um, we're going to uh, basically uh, change our root login to use uh, MySQL native passwords. Um, so what you'll want to type in is uh, alter user, and then we're going to quote root at localhost. Um, identified with MySQL native passwords. And we're going to use the password, password123. So whatever password you put in uh, these quotes right here is the password that you're going to be using. So we're just going to do a simple password like that. And it should say query OK. Um, and then the next command that we're going to do is flush privileges. and then we can exit and you just type exit for that so now we're back into the normal um, command line interface and our mysql database is set up and secured so obviously i wouldn't recommend using a simple password like password one two three you definitely want to use uh, a more secure password because I think that's on the top 10 uh, password guess list. So if you were to guess a password, um, password123 is a good one to try. Um, so now we're, uh, we're almost done with our LAMP server. The last part of the LAMP is uh, PHP. So we're gonna go ahead and install PHP. And this is a, another pretty straightforward install. So we're going to do a sudo apt install PHP. That's for the base program. And then lib apache2 mod PHP, which is the hooks for um, PHP for Apache. And then we need a PHP MySQL, which are the hooks for uh, the MySQL server. So everything in your LAMP is aware of the PHP install. So go ahead and hit enter on that. Y for yes, that we want to install all these packages and give it a couple seconds. All right, so there's PHP. So after that, we're gonna go ahead and make sure um, that the PHP pages load first in Apache. So what we're going to do is type in a sudo nano, um, and then we're going to edit the file uh, dir.conf located in the etc slash apache2 slash mods dash enabled directory. And this will show you which uh, files that Apache will be looking for. Uh, if you notice, the PHP file is uh, the fourth one in. All we're going to do is erase that from right there and we're going to type it at the front of the list and this uh, just makes uh, apache look for that first um, it'll look for your standard html files next i think having it the fourth one in uh, is still doable but i think it just takes longer to search for it so um, that's why we're changing it so we're going to push Control z to say we want to exit Oops, I did that wrong, sorry. Let's go back in there. And yes, we want to edit it. So I pushed the wrong uh, <laughs> command. We don't want to press Control Z, you want to press Control X. Okay, so Control X for exit. It's asking, do you want to um, save what's in the buffer? We're gonna hit yes, Y for yes. 
and then press enter that we want to leave the name the same. And just because I did that wrong, let's go ahead and check and make sure that our changes are there and they are. So um, good thing to know. So control Z will get you, it'll quit out of a program versus exiting property properly, which was the control X. So let's get back out of there. Now we are going to restart our uh, Apache server because we've made changes to the con config file. And if anytime you make a change to the config file, you're going to need to restart Apache. Um, and you're going to use the sudo uh, system ctl restart Apache command. And simple as that. Now we're going to check the status of Apache. And we're going to use the sudo system ctl status Apache 2. Press enter. And it shows active running. So we are good to go. On this screen, you can press Control Z because we're not actually going to be saving anything. It's just a readout. So um, the next thing to do is, I guess, just test PHP and make sure that that is working as expected. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our first uh, web page. Um, all of your web content uh, is going to go into your uh, var slash www slash html um, folder um, and we're going to create a file called info.php it can be named whatever you want but uh, that's what we're going to use so sudo nano uh, directory to the file and info.php and it's going to pull up a blank uh, document uh, pretty simple coding for this. Uh, all you're going to want to do is a open and close for your PHP language and then one function in here which is your PHP info function. So PHP info open and close parenthesis and a semicolon. Uh, we're going to press uh, control X to exit out and it's going to ask do we want to save our changes? Y for yes. Uh, enter that we want to leave the name the same. And now if we go to our web browser and uh, type in a forward slash info dot php, we should get something that looks like this. And uh, this is a page written in PHP. So um, for that one line of, uh, or actually three lines of PHP code, we get all of this information. So uh, that's kind of proof positive that our PHP installation is working as it should. So. Now that we've verified that PHP is installed and working, we're gonna go ahead and just delete that file because there's no use in leaving uh, files that you're not gonna be using um, sitting around for uh, people to exploit. So let's go ahead and delete it with the rm command, sudo rm, the location of the file and the file name. And let's go ahead and check again and make sure that nothing shows up. Not found, perfect. Let's make sure that our normal page is still loading, and it is. So that is how to install and set up a LAMP server. So now we will be able to um, load up uh, web pages. Uh, these are just internal web pages. So right now we're not hooked into the internet. Uh, we're just uh, on our local internal network inside our um, uh, normal uh, PCs that are connected to that network will be able to see these web pages, but um, we're not hooked into the outside right now and we're still using an IP address. But uh, future videos, I will be um, explaining how to uh, publicly post your websites um, and any other web services that you feel that you want to um, have public access to. So that's about it. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave comments. I will be glad to answer them. Um, stay tuned for future videos. Um, my next video on Linux, I think I'm going to be setting up a um, an RSS um, feed reader um, using Tiny Tiny RSS. Um, that is kind of the whole point of why I started doing these videos. I thought I'd uh, set up an RSS reader, but uh, obviously there's a lot of steps to get to that point. So I figured I might as well film them and uh, let you know how all that works. So um, stay tuned and be sure to like and subscribe. I will have a written documentation on how to set up this web server um, on my website under the tutorial section. 
So if you prefer to, you know, uh, copy and paste the commands like I did, um, just go to my website and you should have all the information that was uh, uh, contained in this video. So thank you and bye.